Hello everyone. Welcome you all to this new video. In my previous video, we were uh, discussing with the additional problems list, right? In that, uh, from the model paper, I have solved three problems of D from the two different modules of module one and three. So in this video, we will be continuing with the same model paper problems which we have left till now, which are of different kind. Okay. So here, this is the question seven B from module four related to field pattern. Okay. So we are having one more problem related to field pattern. Let us see that. So the question goes like this: Obtain the field pattern for a two-point source situated symmetrically with respect to origin. So here they have given the condition that situated symmetrically with respect to origin. So it indicates directly that the value of dou would be equal to zero. Okay. So here assume the distance between two point sources as lambda by two. So this is the question here. So with respect to right that right the given parameters that is. Uh, n is equal to 2 there is number of point sources are 2 then dou is equal to 0 d is equal to lambda by 2 since dou is equal to 0 so the array whatever pattern generated is a broad side array so the in the broad side array the major lobes and the the pattern is generated uh, horizontal to the array okay so this is the major lobe here and the minor lobes are with respect to the uh, null values formed okay so now let us see Here for dou is equal to zero, so the maximum value would be occurring at phi is equal to ninety degree and two seventy degree as we see here. And in order to find the minor lobes, we need to be using this condition here. That is, electric field E is equal to sine n phi by two divided by sine phi by two. Where here this phase value is equal to one, so n phi by two would be equal to uh, plus or minus two k plus one pi by two. Why? Because we have already given in the question, it is a broadside array because it is situated symmetrically with respect to origin. So that's why. uh the condition for a broadside array uh whenever you are having the maximum value phi max in order to be calculating you need to be using this limit because we have seen this in the uh, uh array of two isotropic point sources one case also right when we are having equal amplitude and phase so that only is given in this question in this question also the phase is equal and ampli amplitude is also equal so that's why this condition you need to be applying So that is n phi by two is equal to plus or minus two k plus one pi by two. Name this as equation one. Here the value of phi we know that it is equal to dr. Uh, here the value of psi. So this is psi, okay? Not phi, sorry. This is n psi, okay? So psi is equal to dr cos phi plus dou. So since dou is equal to zero, so psi is equal to dr cos phi. So substitute the value of psi in this equation. So that uh, after substituting we will be getting the value as equation one would be n by two. Psi is replaced by dr cos phi is equal to plus or minus 2k plus 1 pi by 2. So 2 2 gets cancelled. So cos phi m because we are having the maximum value of phi. So cos phi m is equal to plus or minus 2k plus 1 pi divided by n dr is bring brought to other side. Here the value of dr we know that dr is equal to beta d. Beta is 2 pi by lambda and d is in the question they have given it as lambda by 2. Lambda lambda gets cancelled. 2 2 gets cancelled. So the value of dr is equal to pi. So put it in this equation. Plus or minus 2k plus 1 pi divided by ndr. So plus or minus 2k plus 1 pi divided by uh, the value of a number of isotropic points which are 2 and the value of dr is pi. So pi pi gets cancelled. We would be left with phi m is equal to cos. You bring it to other side. So phi m is equal to cos inverse of plus or minus 2k plus 1 pi by 2. Okay. Now we need to be calculating since the value of n is 2 for two separate values of k, you need to be calculating the maximum angles generated. Okay, maximum phase difference. So for k is equal to zero, so this maximum phase difference are used to be drawing the minor lobes. Okay, keep it in mind they are used to be attaining the minor lobes. So for k is equal to zero, the value of phi m is cos inverse of plus or minus 2 plus 0. Sorry, 2 into 0 plus 1 by 2. So two into zero is zero. One by two remains. So cos inverse of plus or minus one by two is plus or minus sixty degree. Okay. So this is the first value for k equal to zero, and for k equal to one, it is phi m is equal to cos inverse of plus or minus two into one plus one by two. That is cos inverse of three by two. That is not defined. But when you draw the field pattern, you should be defining that with respect to angles, positive and negative angles generated. Okay. So how that is done, I'll tell you. First thing you need to be knowing that this is not defined. Okay, write it or not defined. And two values are done. Now again to find the null directions, we need to be putting the value of e is equal to zero here because we are following the null direction, null null condition. So that's why e is equal to zero. Automatically sine n psi by two is also equal to zero. So whenever it is equal to zero, we know that the condition is given by n psi by two is equal to plus or minus k pi. 
right? That you put it here. Substitute the value of psi that is dr cos phi is equal to plus or minus k pi. So cos phi naught is equal to plus or minus two. You bring it to other side that is two k pi and n dr you bring it to other side. So cos phi naught is equal to plus or minus two k pi divided by n dr. After that, uh, here substitute the value of dr that is pi n is equal to 2. So 2, 2 gets cancelled, pi pi gets cancelled. The value of phi naught is equal to uh, cos inverse of plus or minus k. Now put this in the equation of k in order to calculate two values of k for 0 and 1. For k equal to 0, phi naught value is cos inverse of plus or minus 0 that is 90 degree. And for k is equal to 1, phi naught is equal to cos inverse of plus or minus 1 that is either 0 degree or 180 degree. So with respect to this now, field pattern can be drawn here. So for major lobe, you need to be considering the uh, null uh, null directions whatever we have got but you see here null directions are all, all are on the axis only it belongs it, it is on the axis that is 90 and 180 degrees so that's why whatever the uh, minimum restriction under uh, maximum value here we have got 60 degree plus or minus 60 degree so first mark those angles that is plus 60 degree minus 60 degree and opposite angle also you need to be marking in order to be drawing the other side of the major loop that is plus 120 degree and minus 120 degree so with respect to that angle you need to be drawing the major lobe with respect to null directions and minor lobes can be drawn from the angles which we have drawn that is plus 60 minus 60 plus 120 minus 120 like this the field pattern is generated for this problem okay so yeah please note it down we'll get to the next question so this is the next question guys 9c of model paper 1 so the question is find the length l of the h plane aperture uh, flare angles theta e and theta h of the pyramidal horn antenna for which the e plane aperture is given that is 10 lambda and it follows the transverse electrode that is te 10 mode okay here we need to be assuming the value of dou delta it, that is 0.2 lambda in e plane and 0.375 lambda in h plane so also they have told us to find the directivity so these are the things uh, mentioned here in this question to find how you should be starting first year with respect to formulas. I've already discussed this in the horn antenna concept part. That problem was not done properly. So this is the correct question here. You see here, first write the given parameters always in order to avoid confusions. First write the given parameters. Okay. Whenever you approach a problem, first thing you need to be knowing to write is the given parameters. That would be really helping you to solve the problems in a correct manner. Okay. Yeah, first the given is AE. AE stands for E plane aperture. E plane aperture is given in the question that is 10 lambda. AE is equal to 10 lambda. And E plane delta value is given that is delta E is equal to 0.2 lambda. Delta H is equal to 0.375 lambda for E plane and H plane. Now we know that delta E is given by AE square by 8L. So with respect to this, the value of L can be found out, right? So now here you write the equation in terms of L that is L is equal to AE square by 8 times delta E. So AE value is already given that is 10 lambda. So L is equal to 10 lambda the whole square divided by 8 times delta E that is 0.2 lambda. So 10 lambda the whole square is 100 lambda square divided by point sorry 1.6 lambda. Okay 8 into 0.2 is 1.6. So one lambda term gets cancelled. So our answer is 100 lambda divided by 1.6 that is L is equal to 62.5 lambda okay so this is the first value of L now this value of L using H plane aperture you could be solving the uh, problem related to H plane aperture that is you know that again H plane uh, direct directivity that is delta is given by delta H is equal to a H square by 8 L same as the same for E plane also now here in this now a H term you write it here and just all the terms you write it other side that is a h is equal to square root of 8 l into delta h okay so here l value we already know delta h is already given substitute it and find the value of a h that is 8 into 62.5 lambda into 0.375 lambda so here you would be getting 187.5 lambda square where root and lambda uh, root and square gets cancelled we are left with only lambda and root 187.5 is 13.69 so the value of uh, H plane aperture is AH is equal to 13.69 lambda. Okay. Also, they have told us to calculate the flare angles theta E and theta H. So the formula for flare angle theta E is given by 2 tan 2 into tan inverse of AE by 2L. And for theta H is given 
it is given by 2 into tan inverse of ah by 2l okay direct formulas you need to remember it and substitute the values directly that is uh, 2 tan inverse of ae is 10 lambda divided by 2 into 62.5 lambda 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 gets cancelled uh, do the remaining substitution do the simplification and we will be getting 2 tan inverse of 0.08 that is 9.14 so this is the theta e angle similarly theta h angle again it is 2 into tan inverse of ah by 2l 2 into tan inverse of 13.69 lambda divided by 125 lambda okay that is 2 into 62.5 that is 125 lambda lambda gets cancelled 13.69 divided by 125 is 0.1 2 into tan inverse of 0.1 is 11.42 so these are the two flaring flare angles formed now the di final directivity of horn antenna can be found by this formula that is d is equal to 8 pi a e a h divided by lambda square so all the parameters are given in the question substitute it that is 8 into pi is replaced by 3.14 a e is 10 lambda a h we have calculated it as 13.69 lambda divided by lambda square so lambda square term and here if you multiply these two terms that also would be becoming lambda square so all the lambda terms gets cancelled only the new, uh, numerical values just multiply that is 8 into 3.14 into 10 into 13.69 you put it in the calculator and you will be getting the directivity as 3438.92 okay in terms of uh, decibels also you could be writing it that is if you substitute 10 log base 10 of whatever this answer you got that is 3438.92 if you substitute in the calculator whatever the answer we get in terms of decibels also you can be writing it okay i'll do it here you see here 10 log base 10 means you should be putting log only in the calculator and 3438.92 this is the answer we get that is 35.3 db okay so whenever if they mention in terms of uh, db you need to be calculating directivity this is the formula you need to be referring 10 log base 10 of whatever directivity you get so yeah that's all for this video guys we have seen two important problems so in the next video we'll see with some more problems okay so till then stay tuned and watch all the all of our previous videos okay thank you